Cheers to GT Omega for supporting this guide. They sell a range of cockpits spanning all budgets, from wheel stands right through to full aluminium rigs, as well as a range of gaming chairs too. Check out their stuff and get a 5% discount via the link in the description. There's one single threat that blights the lives of sim racers in their fledgling years. Spins. Sometimes coming out of nowhere, sometimes agonisingly slow, yet still unavoidable, nothing makes you feel quite so useless as losing control altogether. Being fast takes confidence, and how are you supposed to feel confident if you feel like the car might kill you at any moment? Well, I'm here to try and make you spin-proof, to get you feeling better about pushing yourself to go faster and ultimately enjoying racing a lot more. This guide will help you conceptualise how spins happen, how to stop a spin when it happens, and how to make them less likely to begin with. The journey to spin-free driving is gradual and it won't happen overnight, but any improvement that you can make that you can reliably achieve again and again will make you feel amazing and you will be ready to take the next step up from that. Car control is teachable. It's not something you either have or you don't. Anyone can learn so long as you listen up and you don't lose hope. My guide is not overly technical, it's just intended to rewire your thinking and help you unlock a new approach to crack this problem once and for all. By the end of this video, you should no longer fear the spin. For the impatient, first let's quickly review how you might catch some typical spins when they strike. We'll go into things further afterwards. When you first detect that you may have overcooked it, you'll feel your steering going light and the back end of a car starting to step out, and the instant you feel this you must react as quickly as you can to use your hands and your feet to try and cancel the car's attempt to swap ends. With your hands, you must quickly flick the steering over into the direction the back of the car is now trying to go, otherwise known as counter steer or opposite lock, because it usually means you are now steering the front wheels opposite to the way you were going. You may already know to do this, and on good four speed back wheels, it's much clearer where the front tyres want to go. At the same time as counter steering, however, you must restore grip to the back of the car by reacting with your feet, depending on the situation. You got into this mess by doing something that broke the grip at the rear of the car, and your feet are vital for getting that back. If you were braking and slowing down when the car broke loose, you should react by smoothly reducing or lifting off the brake pedal. But if that doesn't stop the slide by itself, then you should introduce a tiny amount of throttle to neutralise the rear, combine that with full counter steer, and hope it bites. If you were just turning mid-corner and you were neither braking hard or powering out when the spin started, add a tiny bit of throttle to neutralise and balance the car. Don't touch the brakes as that will make things worse. If you were accelerating out of a corner when the car broke loose, then reducing the throttle moderately without completely lifting it will help the rear regain grip and stabilise. If you were in a low gear, slow speed corner when it stepped out, then you'll need to come off the throttle quite a way. But if you were in a high gear, high speed corner when it stepped out, then you should only have to back off the power a little bit. The key thing here is not coming off the throttle all the way, completely lifting will make the situation worse. If you react quickly, in time, and as described, the spin will hopefully be stopped from progressing but you must then be ready to catch the car's weight swinging back as it snaps back into position. In order to do so, when you feel as though the car's tyres are about to bite into the track, straighten the steering wheel and hold your feet steady. If you catch the initial spin but you don't catch the car coming back, you will just be catapulted in the other direction. Saving spins is dependent on reaction time, and everything I just described sometimes happens in the blink of an eye, so the quicker your reflexes, the better your chance of stopping it. If you've always reacted quickly, but still struggled to save a spin, it's likely because you're using the steering wheel, but not doing anything with your feet, which is not always an obvious thing to do. But your feet are just as important for saving a slide as your hands are. So these are some of the cures, but at this point I have to come clean to you. The premise of this video is an outright lie. The threat of a spin will always be there, no matter how good you get, or how long you've been doing it. I've been doing this for over 10 years, and it will still strike every now and then. It's not often you actually recover a spin if it goes past the point of no control. Prevention is much better than cure, and the true intent of this video is to highlight ways to give you a much stronger sense of feeling with the car. 
which is what you need to keep full control of whatever you're driving. Recording the clips you've seen so far has actually been pretty tricky because the reflexes that are built up to cut off a spin before it even happens are so ingrained in me now, getting myself to spin on purpose, at least without looking comical, is like asking me not to flinch if someone's about to whack me on the head with a rolled up magazine. You too can gain this subconscious reflex if you make the effort to embed the following approaches and techniques in your conscious driving until they burrow beneath the surface and you don't even have to think about them anymore. If you drive a manual car, you'll remember how much you had to concentrate on your gear changes when you were first learning, whereas now it takes no thought at all. The same thing goes here. Let's dig in. To keep control, you just have to live and die by one mantra. It's all about the rear tires. They are your one and only, your God. Nothing else really matters but them. Dramatic I know, but for me it rings true, so long as the rear tyres have a grip on the track, you will not lose control. Easily said, though, and the challenge many people have is sensing when the tyres have grip and when they don't, and without much of a raw feedback you get in real life, you have to build and form these senses in your mind alone. To some folks this comes naturally and they don't have to sit and think about why or how, but to many this will just take a nudge in the right direction and what follows now is a series of nudges. Building a keen mental sense of weight transfer is gonna help you a lot because it's the one thing the simulator cannot convey to you very well physically. When weight transfers away from and back onto the rear tires as you drive, they endure a constant seesaw of being lifted from and squeezed into the track. Although there's a lot more to it, a good basic rule is that your rear tires can only grip proportionally to how much they are being pressed down into the surface. When you slow down, the weight shifts towards the front and there's less weight pushing down on the rears, meaning less rear grip. And whenever you are speeding up, that weight shifts towards the back, meaning there's more weight pushing down on the rears, meaning more rear grip. The share of the weight is always shifting and sloshing around all corners as you drive. This is plainly obvious to see on a big squishy dirt truck but even on really stiff race cars that don't seem to roll or pitch at all, this is absolutely still happening underneath you, just much less visually obvious. No matter what you drive, sensing weight transfer is important. The whole point of this is just to inspire you to think about the downward pressure on your rear tyres as you drive. Soon this helps you calculate what's going to happen just ahead of you, so that you can predict when those rear tyres will be unweighted and have less grip, all loaded up and offering more grip. Like I said, the rear tires are the main thing that stands between you and a spin, so it's important to sense the tires, become one with the tires. Have you ever played a game of darts with one of these? Found in your local pub or sports bar? The reason it flies straight when you throw it is because the nose of the dart has very little air resistance thanks to the streamlined point, while the fins at the back of the dart cause a lot of air resistance whenever the dart's tail is anywhere other than directly behind. Because the nose resists less than the tail whenever it gets sideways, it will always correct itself and fly straight. The exact same principle is what can control your slides. Whenever your car gets loose, you've got one job. Make the rear of the car grip and resist the track more than the front end does. Whichever end of the car resists the least will end up out in front. But unlike the dart, which uses air resistance to do this, you only have the tyre grip on the track. In this overhead view of the slide just shown, the front tyres are shown in blue and the rear tyres in green. The car is shown during a slide recovery, so the front tyres are already counter-steered in the direction of travel, which is in this direction, meaning the track is coming at us from this direction. So if we draw the oncoming surface of the track coming at us in the same way the air would come at our dart from earlier, it would look like this. The front tyres offer less resistance because they are pointed straight at the direction of travel, and tyres love to roll straight ahead as it causes the least friction. That's why we counter steer. The rear tyres, as they cannot be steered, are at an angle to the oncoming track. This causes resistance because they scrub on the surface. This creates the resistance at the back of the car. So long as you're not locking the rear tyres with too much brake, 
or you're spinning the rear tires with too much power, both of which strip all grip from the rear tires, they will dig into the track in line with whatever downward pressure they are being pushed down with, meaning the amount of weight you're able to balance backwards onto them. This is why shifting weight back over the rear tires is so important in a slide, because without that downward pressure pushing them into the track, they cannot hang on to the surface underneath them. This is the playbook for recovering slides. Counter steer to reduce friction at the front and react with your feet to restore grip and friction at the back. Done quickly enough and with smooth but precise reactions, the car will be brought back into line. Now I've been going on for about 10 minutes now and really it's time for you to go and apply something. You can only apply a fix if you can look at the problem in a way that makes sense to you. Hopefully there's something that I've selected in this video that helps you if nothing else has but it will still take some focus to get your feet involved if you've never really used them in these situations before. Don't give up, because as I said earlier, it doesn't take long for your feet to start reacting as instinctively as your hands do once you've given yourself a chance to learn. Don't come away from this thinking that every spin can be saved. The aim is to take you from, let's say, a 100% disaster rate to more like 10% when it all sets in. I still spin from time to time, but when I do, it's down to being greedy or unfocused rather than not understanding where the boundaries are, and that's the difference that gives me a lot of confidence. If you don't know how to save any kind of instability, you won't push yourself hard enough to get into any trouble, and that's when you get stuck. When you know how to get out of trouble, you won't be as hesitant to dance on that line. As soon as I recover from the traumatic process of creating this video, I'll be back to expand on it. So subscribe to the channel for more things like this, pop a like and a comment with any thoughts whatsoever, questions are encouraged so I can clarify anything you ain't sure of. For now, just contemplate on what I've shown you and let me know if it works for you, I really hope it does. Let me know. Cheers.